Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. You know that glorious feeling when you've done a great job walling your base? And cavalry raids don't scare you, and even archers at the door don't really scare you if you're far enough back from it. It's like being in the womb again. You feel a certain peace knowing that you're completely safe from... Ah, damn it. Today's video is all about those invisible holes in your wall, when they happen, and a bit about how you can reduce how often it happens. Let's check it out. Here I have a peaceful town on an Arabia map. Looks pretty safe, right? But this is no normal city wall. This wall has so many holes, it's like the sponge of all city walls. Except that instead of soaking up water, it soaks up enemy armies. That analogy kind of broke down there, but you know what I'm saying. Let's start with the most common type of gap that I see online. The good old beach gap. New players don't realize this, but even though the trees look like they go right up to the water, there's a one tile beach space in between. It's a perfectly good idea to save resources and cut down build time to incorporate natural features into your wall, but you have to make sure when you're using water and trees as part of your wall early in the game that you mine the gap. That small plug ends up being a strong point in your wall, because it's hard for the enemy to move through it, and you can really choke point them there. But you have to remember that little guy right there. Next, do you see any holes in this wall? No? Looks pretty good? Well, let's test it. Sneaky bugger went right between the barracks and the wall. This is an optical illusion brought on by the isometric view of the game and enhanced by elevation. Elevation, as we'll see, is a huge contributor to gaps in general. The barracks here is one elevation higher than the wall, and this effect is magnified even more if the barracks is moved up, though I think the illusion is best when there's an elevation difference of two. Without the buildings there, you can see the elevation difference very easily. You can quickly check if your wall has gone right up to the building by trying to build a new wall along the existing one and extend it into the building. It's worth checking, especially if you put down the wall first and then fit the building into the gap, although it should be obvious at that point if there's a gap. We see the same issue with this house here. Again, if we remove the house and part of the wall, we see there was some elevation shenanigans happening, and after leveling the terrain, the gap is immediately obvious. Because this elevation is sloping down away from you, it looks like the palisade walls are diagonal here, but they're not. When we lower the train, we see that it was just another optical illusion. Yet again, we see elevation is playing tricks. The same thing here. Do you see the gap? There's actually two, between the houses and between the house and the wall, that's easy to see once we level the terrain, yet again caused by terrain closer to you being higher than what's behind it. If you're ever not sure, just scan the area with a palisade wall, and you'll probably catch it. Well, that's one wall done. Actually, no it's not. There's a gap right here too, where the palisades aren't connected. This one isn't as likely to happen when you construct the wall, but if you build part of the wall and then come back and finish it later, be really careful to make sure that those two pieces end up connecting. Moving on, how can you tell if this wall extends right to the forest? I sure wouldn't do it just by looking. Use a unit or a new palisade to check, and of course, there's a huge gap here. Again, the best way to find these is to take the wall and try to extend it well into the forest, and not just stop where you think the edge is. Next wall now. Do you think there's a gap between the wall and the trees on either side here? It turns out there isn't, but it's probably worth checking. The palisade wall doesn't extend right up to the market though. Yet again, it could have been avoided by extending the wall through the building when you lay it down, instead of trying to eyeball it. And again, elevation sloping away from the camera is involved here. Last wall, the palisades look pretty good, making nice use of the palm trees. One of the buildings has a problem though, which one do you think it is? Maybe the elevation slopes can give you a hint. It's the blacksmith, there's a gap on the right side. Yet again, the downward slope. I think you get it by now. Oh, and there's also a gap through the trees. Especially with palm trees, it's worth checking that out. Now, I don't count this as necessarily being a gap in the wall, but trees are a dangerous idea in the late game, especially in Forgotten Empires, for two reasons. First, your lumberjacks open it up over time. 
you forget about it and you do your thing on the rest of the map and then later when you get raided it turns out your town was much less protected than you thought. If you're going to put a lumber camp or a castle age town center on a wood line that's part of your wall, you could consider extending the wall around the trees just to be safe. You might think that's a waste of stone, so a house wall could be another idea. The point is that you don't want to leave your base wide open to getting raided, especially in an area that you're not expecting them to be able to break through. Second, in all versions of the game, siege onagers cut through trees, and in Forgotten Empires, all onagers cut through trees, so a tree wall late in the game can give you a false sense of security. You also won't get any warnings from it, unlike when a wall is attacked. There have been instances where I've walled the inside of a tree line, not so much to give a strong defense, but so I would get an alarm sound if the opponent tried to cut through and hit my wall. Okay, so you know to watch out along water lines and on downward slopes. What else can you do to cut down on gaps in the wall? Well, one thing you can try is the Pussywood mod. You're probably familiar with it. It's a popular mod that shrinks trees on the map. I get comments all the time on my gameplay videos that I should try it. Personally, I don't use it because I like the look of the regular trees, but maybe I shouldn't knock it until I've tried it. So here we go. This is life with the Pussywood mod. Looks like the map got a bad haircut, but I'll keep my snarky comments to myself. Let's see if it does its job and helps prevent gaps. Well, obviously it doesn't help with those elevation ones. And surprisingly, it doesn't help very much on the right with the downsloping terrain. But I'll grant that it helps with the palm tree path here and around the water. There's another popular mod that's been suggested to me, and that's the alignment grid. We can see with this mod that those gaps in the wall are easier to spot to a degree, but it's not like they jump out at you. If anything, it seems to help more in detecting the changing slope more visually and at a glance, so you'll know where to watch out for and double check more thoroughly. Again, there's a big aesthetic change, but if your top priority is functionality, I can see the appeal. One final feature I want to talk about before we wrap up here is civilization architecture. I didn't choose the Japanese for this town just because I choose them in all my tests, but they were actually one of the easiest to hide holes in the wall with which is great for a video like this, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but that's not good in an actual game. Here are the same walls with a gap behind the barracks and blacksmith, one on each side of the university and two gaps around the houses. Maybe you disagree, but I have the hardest time seeing the barracks gap with the Japanese architectural style. The Japanese blacksmith also seems a bit larger than the others, to the point that I think it looks more convincing that it's touching the palisade wall behind it. All of these pictures were in the Feudal Age, and in the Imperial Age it can get even crazier. It very clearly looks like this Japanese or Chinese blacksmith extends not just up to, but seemingly into the palisade, despite there being a gap. Whereas with a Hun player, it's very obvious to me that I need more wall there. Looking at the university as well, I would be more likely to suspect a gap in the Byzantine one than the others, especially on the right. Even if you get fooled occasionally to double check where there really isn't a gap, I would prefer that to buildings that hide them. With the houses, I find the Japanese architecture again looks larger than the rest, with the Goth and Byzantine architectures seeming much more likely to make me question if there's a gap and want to double check it. As you play with the different civilizations a lot, I'm sure you learn the architecture and your brain starts to read them all equally, but until that point, maybe make a mental note of civilizations and buildings that you seem to get fooled by more than others. So that's holes in the wall, how they can happen, and some ideas about what you can do to prevent it, at least part of the time. Watch out for elevation, and always double check if you're not completely sure you're safe. The more complex the wall, with more buildings inside of it, the greater the importance of a quick double check at the end. Walls, after all, are only as good as their weakest point. In fact, when you're done, you may as well lock any gates and try to send your scout through. If he starts doing this, you're in the clear. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope that helps you out sometime down the road, and I'll see you next time.